Hey guys, Kiko here. This is my hotel room in Austin, Texas. Tomorrow we have the first concert of the tour and tonight we have the rehearsal, full rehearsal at the venue. So I'm pretty excited to start playing live again and um, actually I have around 50 minutes to do this video here. So let's do this. So the first question, and I think it's gonna be the only one actually, uh, from Mercedes Tessolin. She's asking me to tell more stories about the recording of my album called Universal Inverso. Universal Inverso. Inverse Universe. So this album, I, I well, actually she's asking this because last week I sent an email. So I can put here down below the link if you wanna be part of my mailing list. So I send emails talking about guitar stuff, what, what I'm listening, what I'm using, different stuff. And sometimes I tell some stories. So I was telling the story about the Universal Inversal because I'm releasing now the songbook of this album. So many years later, I'm doing all the songbooks from my album. So I have open source, I have the No Gravity and now Universal Inversal. And it's a very interesting album because it makes um, Latin music, Brazilian music, jazz, and rock, of course. And it was pretty scary to do an album like this back then, back in 2006. I was not sure about it. You know, I had the passion. I always had the passion for Brazilian music and jazz and, you know, playing fusion, but I never thought that I would do an album like that. You know, it's pretty hard to do a solo album and decide to do um, a different style, you know, a, a style that you're not don't feel very comfortable with so but i remember in japan once um i was talking to the label jvc label and they said they love the two songs from no gravity so my first album from 2005 had two songs that i was playing acoustic guitar uh, brazilian style so one song beautiful language and the other song choro de criança like um Cry baby, I would say, you know, translation. So Choro is a style, uh, a Brazilian uh, style of music, right? So Choro de Criança and Beautiful Language. Those two songs and only acoustic guitar. So the guy from the record label said, well, if you want to do a jazz album, like a Brazilian album with acoustic guitar, we would, you know, we would release. So that means we would pay for that, right? So I said, well, that's good, because then I, have, I can pay the studio, can pay the whole thing. And then, and if the Japanese label JVC approves that I, I will record all the kinds of music, that's a good sign. I was kind of uh, afraid of doing that, but he said, you know, if you keep doing metal, if you keep uh, playing with Angra back then, uh, it, it's fine to do another album playing different style. So I said, oh, great. So I, I kept that in mind. So. In Brazil, I started, you know, uh, jamming with a, p a Cuban pianist, Yaniel Matos. friend of mine and uh, we started composing together I was going to his house sometimes he was, go he was coming to my house and um, I was playing guitar acoustic guitar and he was playing piano I'm showing you know showing my songs he was showing his songs and then I remember once uh, things were getting together so I had uh, I was filming with my camera back in 2006 like this big camera and I had my laptop and I have all the the scores you know like all the notes about the songs we were writing and then Coming back home from that uh, rehearsal, uh, two guys came, you know, nice guys, you know, two guys came with, with a gun and, uh, you know, asked for my car and, uh, and my watch and my phone and, of course, the laptop the with the scores and the cameras and the acoustic guitar and everything inside the car. So they took the car and then I was like, okay, so maybe, so I was, I was very, you know, uh, bummed about this because, you know, like it was a lot of work. And then suddenly I didn't have quite, I had to remember the ideas and I was, you know, I was kind of stressed about that. You know, it's not easy to have a gun. Um, 
pointed to your head and uh, but you know Brazil is a such a, um, you have an inequality right so it's a way that people kind of try to balance things there in Brazil I guess so anyways all right so months later okay I said okay let let me try again and then I I kind of remembered all the songs and the ideas and you know started started from zero so in 2005 Angra has just finished the a long tour playing Temple of Shadows was a very successful album and uh, everybody was tired and nobody was thinking about composing a new album and starting rehearsing and writing a new new songs so I thought well maybe that's the best time to to think about my you know fusion album so um, so I I call Yaniel Matos the pianist Kuka Teixeira One of the best drummers in Brazil, uh, and Carlinhos Noronha, one of the best bass players in Brazil. those songs in this quartet right and uh, I booked the studio but the problem was that Kuka the drummer had only few days because he was going to Europe, uh, to Europe with a um, famous singer from Brazil so he had like this uh, few days to rehearse and to record so okay you know metal guys they, we go to the studio and spend months like repeating re-recording the stuff and then trying different solos and experimenting things but the the uh, let's say the fusion guys or the jazz guys with this mentality of being uh, about all about improvisation and to play always being fresh they didn't want to rehearse and they thought like three days is more than enough to play 10 songs like come on you can do this in a day so i said okay let me try this new vibe of everything at the moment and sounding fresh it was pretty scary for me because I was used to other um, ways of recording, right? So we did few rehearsals because they could read the scores and play right away the song, so it was not a big deal for them. For me, it was, you know? But um, yeah, so then we had this three, three days for recording the album. And then, of course, Angra booked a show on the second day of the recording, <laughs> but luckily, this show was in Sao Paulo, so I could drive to the to the to the festival. It was a festival, and then uh, my idea was no problem. I record the Fusion album in the morning. During the lunchtime, I drive to the show, put my metal <laughs> outfit, play metal, and drive back. And you know, uh, I was using a Telecaster, and I get my Telecaster back, and then play the the Fusion and uh, relaxed album. Uh, it was pretty difficult to go from a recording session, um, very intense but different kind of music, drive throughout the uh, Sao Paulo traffic and uh, play a metal show and come back and back to that scenery of uh, like a, a, a studio uh, vibe, right? But I did, that was the second day of the recording. So three days recording, so we did the album, great. So then I, after listening to the album, I thought, well, this is too light because I used I used a lot of uh, clean tone and I didn't like that much, so I said I want to re-record re the guitar, so at least a few songs with, um, with more distortion, with overdrive, something like that, to sound a little bit more uh, fusion, a little bit more heavy, I mean it's not heavy, but a little bit more uh, rock, I would say. So I decided, I booked a studio, but Angra decided to do an album now, right? So a full day with Angra, so I had to go at night to record the guitars and uh, of course during that week or two weeks uh, something that never happened in Brazil uh, happened 
which was the PCC, like the, I would say, a cartel, a Sao Paulo cartel, declare a curfew to the whole city. So can you imagine that? Like a city with 15 million people, a curfew. So at night, nobody could uh, go out. And, and this PCC, the first command of the capital um, cartel, and then people obeyed. But me, because I had to record my guitars and I had to deliver the master to the Japanese label because the Japanese label was uh, expecting, you know, had a deadline and deadline is a deadline, right? Uh, so I start driving at night. You shoot, you're not su supposed to, right? I, by the way, I had, a, you know, the insurance got me a new car, by the way, because, you know, anyways. Uh, so I was, I was driving at night to re-record some of the guitar, some of the songs that, the songs that has a, a distortion, right? Yeah, so it was pretty tough, but we did it, right? We did, so I, you know, we finished the album, sent the master to, to, the, the, to the Japanese label, right, um, via internet, you know, used to take a, lo a long time, but we sent by internet for the guy to listen what I was doing before the mix. But then, uh, by the way, the manager, Angra manager had a heart attack and went to the hospital, right? So he had a heart attack and went to the hospital. And now I had to deal with the trip because Angra had to go to Europe to record the album to drums. So we went to Europe and I was like by email, kind of sending my notes for the mix of the Universal Inversal. Back then it was not very common to do stuff remotely, so it was kind of weird to send notes, emails about, you know, volumes and delays and stuff like that. Tiago Bianchi was uh, um, mixing the album and receiving those emails. And, uh, but the thing was, just before going to Europe, like a day before, the Japanese uh, label listened to the, to the songs and said, But where is the? There is no acoustic guitar. It's not a. It does. It's fusion. It's not Brazilian stuff. So they were imagining that I was doing like only kind of a bossa nova stuff, and then I said, no problem, no problem. I have this great idea. But I had just one day. I can send you a song for you, for free. You know, just acoustic guitar because um, Japan normally buys like a bonus track to have a different album. A Japanese release with a bonus track. Sometimes they pay a little bit extra for that. And I said, no, don't worry, because I, I was afraid the guy, you know, would uh, terminate the, the whole idea of me releasing the album. So I went to the studio and composed a song, right, like in the same day, on the same day, composed a song and then left uh, for Tiago to figure out how he would build that song with ask all the musicians to play on top of the acoustic guitar that I recorded. And then at least the album would have an acoustic guitar song and then would be a bonus track for Japan and the Japanese were happy because you're not paying for the bonus track. So it was a good solution, but it was very stressful. Next day I went to Europe. So, um, oh good. So then when I came back from Europe, I have to do the artwork and the pictures and then we have like the deadline was like getting shorter and shorter. Finally, we finished the, the, the cover, right? With the artwork and then the, the pictures, the whole thing and the, and the master, I mean, the, and the mixing. And then I sent to the mastering. But when the guy did the mastering in Germany, uh, Jörg, uh, he sent back the mastering for me to listen to. And then I realized that the song that has guitar and piano only, I could hear the met metronome. I don't know why, Uh, Yaniel, the pianist, recorded with a metronome. But anyways, we, you could hear the metronome, you know, because it was so light. And then I was like, what are you gonna do? I cannot have a metronome on the album. And then I, I had to call, like, Kuka, the drummer, to, like, to come, like, at that specific time, that... And luckily, he was back to Brazil. Uh, uh, and then um, he went to the studio and recorded some, some percussion on top, you know, just some little F, uh, sound effects to disguise the metronome so yeah now we could redo the mastering of that song and send to in and have the CD like the master CD so now we have the CD with the artwork with the designer and I have the master CD right to send to Japan I would put in an envelope FedEx to Japan as fast like three days would take from Brazil to Japan that day otherwise i would miss the deadline and if i miss the deadline the album wouldn't be released or would be released like six months later or something like that 
All right, so I was like super stressed. And, uh, and uh, what happened was the guy that did the artwork, he had to drive to give to me uh, on the FedEx store. And then it was the, the FedEx store of a, of, a, of a mall, a shopping mall, because it was the only one that was closing at 8 p.m. Like was the latest, you know, the latest uh, uh, closing hour, right? So we had to drive to that shopping mall. So I, my girlfriend was at the at the door of the store, not letting them to close the store, and uh, the guy was said, supposedly should drive to to give me the the artwork CD, right? But his car was stolen, or he had a car crash, or something happened to his car, and then he couldn't make it. The guy took a taxi and then I just, you know, I was like in the middle of the street waiting for the guy to get the CD and run to the FedEx store. Finally, the Universe Universal Masters uh, was going to Japan uh, in this uh, FedEx um, envelope, right? So what happened, what happens now is like in Japan, they put the, the translations, the uh, record label logo. So they, they kind of adapt a little bit the artwork for the Japanese market. And then the guy from Japan sent me by via internet the you know for me to approve. So I remember like uh, opening his email, but it's 2006, so like a, a image is like super slow. You start seeing like <laughs> you know uh, part by part, super slowly the image start coming, and um, suddenly I start seeing like all the name of the songs were completely out of order. Things were completely different. It was like kind of that's weird because this is this is like my I thought wow this is like my first idea it was the first when I tried to do the artwork for the first time the name of the songs the order the way uh, you know the you know the musicians names you know the credits all those stuff was completely old right so it's like why is this guy's sending me this and what happened was the angry manager that had a, the heart attack. He was good. He was in the hospital, and then the guy, being a good workaholic, he started to to work there at the hospital. So he starts sending emails to whatever the partners and stuff, and then he sent sent an email to the Japanese record label, telling the guys, "Well, Kiku is doing a solo album that is kind of a fusionish, kind of jazz Brazilian stuff, and he's the artwork." And then the Japanese record label received the artwork, the wrong artwork from the manager. And then of course, they trust more the manager than the musician, but that's another conversation for later. So they believe that the, the artwork from the, coming from the manager was the right one. So they ignored all the FedEx uh, you know, thing, you know? And then they printed 5,000 of the, that album with the wrong artwork and said, come on, I send you this, the right FedEx stuff. And then, so they had to, to throw away all the albums. And, they, and then in the end, they wanted me to pay, but I think I didn't pay in the end. I don't remember, but you know, I hope they, they watch this video, but they wanted, they wanted me to pay the, the, the cost of the, you know, um, destroying 5,000 CDs, but it was not my fault anyways. But, that's the story of Universe Inversal. So now you have the songbook of the songs, but it's a crazy story, right? Like two robbed cars, uh, the heart attack, um, 5,000 CDs and trash, uh, very difficult. But the most difficult thing is trying to do something they're not so comfortable with, like playing a different style of music. But I think it was a very important album for me because it kind of it helped me to develop my own uh, style, going towards a different, uh, you know, going closer to my roots, the Brazilian roots and Latin roots, I would say. And uh, actually, the fans they like a lot the album. You know, I got a very good response, even like uh, uh, in the United States and in Europe. And it was pretty, pretty good, pretty good. I even got the best guitarist of the year in Japan, and all those things. So was, uh, in the end, it was a uh, was pretty hard, but I got a uh, um, good reward after that. So here's my message as well. You know, sometimes it looks like, oh, I want to give up. I want to give up. Just keep, just keep going through all the problems. Just finish what you started, and then you will 
you know, uh, get the re reward for that for sure. That's the answer of this one question, but I think it was an interesting story. And um, let me know what you think about that. And uh, check the link here for the songbook and also my mailing list if you want to know sometimes those stories and things like this on your email. Cheers, see you in the next video. Thank you.